Hello everybody, I'm Michael, and today I'll be reviewing LEGO Overwatch set 75972, Dorado Showdown. The set is recommended for ages 8 plus, contains 419 pieces, and retails for $29.99 US. On the front of the box we do see the entire set. We have the nice little fruit stand and the rope with the lights on it. We can also see the kind of building part there that they include which is just kind of a little storefront almost. And then we also get the payload truck and we see all three minifigures. We get Soldier 76, Reaper, and McCree here. I think they did a good job of putting this in its kind of environment. On the background we do see the kind of Dorado map or what is supposed to be the Dorado map. But to me it doesn't look like the Dorado map, it looks more like the kind of smaller elimination map that they released for the same kind of, what's supposed to be the same area in Mexico. I think it's a little weird that they put this on what to me seems like the wrong map. But anyway, I think the background definitely does look nice and fits in well since they are the same kind of place with the set. On the top of the box there are images of all three included minifigures, Soldier 76, McCree, and Reaper. And on the back of the box we have that nice kind of reverse box art like they've been doing with all of the LEGO Overwatch sets. We have the LEGO Overwatch logo in the top. It's weird that the front kind of box art is horizontal or landscape and this one's portrait or kind of vertical, but I think it is nice because no matter which way it's displayed on shelves you will be able to kind of see the best parts of the set. I really think that this is a better view of the set because we get to see some of the what are supposed to be lighting effects there and we also get to see all of the characters kind of weapons there without Soldier being inside of the truck. I do think it's kind of funny that they don't even inc include all of the kind of fruit stand in the background, they just throw it in there kind of halfway, just kind of proves how not important it is. But on this side they did kind of include the right map in the background because this definitely is the Dorado map and where they put the little building section is the right place for that and I really think that it's good that they put it exactly where it was supposed to be because it definitely makes it fit in a lot better with some of the buildings than it did on the previous side. The first character is Soldier 76. He has his very nice looking just kind of plain white hair. You can see his little visor there. It looks like he's probably in his ultimate ability here. And he also has the kind of little silver metal face covering like he does have in the game. He has his nice kind of leather jacket there with the white, blue, red, and black. I think this is a very nice looking figure. He has just solid colored arms which I think is definitely fine because that is how he looks in the game with his normal skin. He has some red gloves. His hand and kind of weapon over here, they are the kind of newer style Overwatch blaster and they're definitely larger than I guess should be minifigure scale but I think they did a great job of kind of getting all that detail into such a small build. You can even see where the kind of rockets would shoot out and you can also see where the bullets would just shoot out of the front. And on the back, there's a nice kind of little slope piece that maybe kind of represents a stock or something. And we can also see on the back the 76 logo there with no printing on the legs. There's his arm, and once again in the front there is no leg printing. The next character up is Reaper, and he's by far my favorite minifigure from this set. I think he just looks fantastic. LEGO did such a great job of making him kind of look ominous and creepy like he's supposed to in the game. I really like that they were able to kind of capture some almost shadow-like detail inside the helmet by adding a little bit of black to his helmet and just kind of head there and it just makes it look really kind of like you're scaring thin to a depth or something. He does have the dual shotguns like he does have in the game. On his chest there is what looks like some ammo or some other kind of weaponry there. He does have a nice kind of little cape piece in the back that connects very well with the hood. They look like they go together quite well. He does have a little bit of detailing in the back kind of under that so I'll show that in a minute but I really think this is just a fantastic figure. Let's go ahead and look at him without the cape. I went ahead and removed the cape, head, and kind of little hood and just to kind of see the detail on the back I think they did a great job of doing this detail. It looks almost like kind of a spine brace or something or just some armor plating on the back. I think it's crazy that they included this since they definitely did not have to since he's supposed to be wearing that long kind of scary looking cape, but I'm very glad that they included that just because I think it adds a whole lot of detail to this character. The next character up is McCree. When I first saw that they were doing a McCree minifigure I was definitely really excited because I love Matthew Mercer who is the voice actor for McCree and I also like the character. He's one of the characters that I do play more often in Overwatch, but I think they really kind of missed the ball on this one because I think the little kind of cape there or almost half cape or maybe shoulder cape there is just kind of lacking a little bit and they also didn't even include a kind of hair hat combo like he has in the game 
they just included a hair piece and a hat piece and McCree definitely looks a little bit weird without the hair piece on and just the hat because you're used to kind of seeing him with his like ends kind of sticking out there but they didn't include that I definitely think they could have because they would shown that they have that piece when they did kind of the Rex minifigures for Lego Movie 2 but I think it's a little bit weird that they didn't do that but the rest of the figure is great his facial expression is just fantastic definitely looks like McCree and on the torso we do have that nice kind of armor plating there and we can see kind of a little ammo bandolier belt there as well as some knee plating or just kind of armor plating on the knee he has just a normal kind of six shooter revolver piece there and on the side there's no printing and on the back there's a little bit of printing let me go ahead and lift up the little cape here and there you go you can see some more of the kind of continued armor printing let's go ahead and remove his hat and kind of helmet and show that and put the hat on him it's just a normal kind of hat piece there's nothing special about it it looks like the indiana jones hat piece from the old indiana jones sets but there you go he definitely does look a little weird i do think that they tried to add that kind of hair detailing there by giving him some kind of sideburns but I don't think that they did a great job because on the back it looks like he is just completely bald other than the hat. And I definitely think Lego missed the mark on this figure, but I still like McCree. And I hope to kind of get a different colored hair hat piece from Rex and put it on this McCree so that he looks correct. Here is the first build of the set. It is definitely filler pieces, just trying to get the piece count up. And I really, for this set, do not care for this at all. I think it's just definitely obvious that they're trying to add some pieces. I don't really think it fits into the set. Obviously on Dorado there is a small little fruit stand section, but I think they could have done and built out a better section than just this one crate full of three banana pieces and three strawberry kind of cherry pieces in there. I think that the kind of play feature, or I guess you could say, where this moves up and down is definitely lacking. I don't know if it's supposed to be a play feature, but they showed it kind of moving in the instruction manual, so I assumed it was supposed to be. I think the telephone cable with the little lights is nice. I think they could have just added that on a small little base there. But on the left here, we do have the nice kind of cylinder here, which is the payload for the map. But in the instruction manual, they just show you to build it like this. But on the front of the box, they show this cable being attached to the kind of building and front there. I will show that whenever I show off the kind of main building, but overall I think that the fruit stand kind of misses the mark. I like the little light cable, and I think that's a cool kind of little paper dragon or something up there. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. And I really do think that they did a good job of making the kind of payload thing look nice. Next up we have the kind of payload truck. I think this just looks fantastic. It definitely looks like a older style truck. And that's definitely what it's supposed to be going for. I like that they did add the ability to kind of roll around while also looking like the hover kind of vehicle like it is in the game. You can see the nice kind of little hover generators or propulsors there. But it does also roll. It rolls on the kind of train wheels from the LEGO train sets. You can kind of see them right there. But they do roll nice and it definitely kind of makes a low profile wheel so that it is covered up by the kind of hovercraft part of it. On the back, it is just kind of a little flat bed, but we can also see where there is a stud there, and that is where you're supposed to put the payload. And let me go ahead and add that. I just showed that off in the last little build, but there it goes right there, and I think it just looks great. It fits on. You can only really put it on a couple ways because these little studs right here kind of have to go in between the grooves. And so I think it's nice because it definitely makes it look more consistent with the game when it is oriented the right way. You can fit some more characters up on the back just like you can in the game and I think that's really cool. I can't wait to put some more of those characters on there and just kind of add out a little battle scene. The roof does come off quite easily. You just kind of pull off all of this. That's probably the easiest way to do it. And then there is room in there for a minifigure. You only do have room for mini one minifigure. And just like in the kind of Overwatch, the Tracer set, with Widowmaker, they did have Tracer kind of driving the payload, and I guess that's just to kind of get little kids into wanting to see it because it's a vehicle. But I do think it's nice that they added the ability to kind of include a figure in there because it definitely does look nice. You do have a little steering wheel. In the game, you're not supposed to have anybody in there or you can't get anybody in there, but I'm glad that they did include it because it adds a whole lot of playability and you can just kind of act out some more scenes from the game. He definitely does look fairly nice in there. He fits pretty well. You can see all of Soldier there through the little visor. There are a few stickers on this. We have one on the front right here. We have one on the side here. 
and then we also have one on this side which is the same as the one on the other side no stickers or anything on the roof but i think this is just a fantastic payload build and i hope that they do more of these kind of payloads from different maps i definitely want the one from eichenwald and i think that would be really cool here is the main build from the map it is just supposed to be the first kind of little high ground checkpoint from the dorado payload map i think they did a good job of making it look like it's supposed to we have the little candle up there and we also have a little walkway for the characters which i will show in a minute we have two lights up on the front just to kind of add a little bit more detail and some more colors other than just kind of gray and tan i like the little candle up in there it also adds a little bit of detail because you get that little flame piece and up on the roof you do have the kind of red what's supposed to be the kind of shingled roof but they couldn't really do that with lego and i understand that but i think they did a good job of making it look like the closest they could with lego on the bottom we do have a few kind of little tile pieces there which in my opinion are a little weird but i guess they kind of had to have some way to attach them but i would have preferred having more tiles on the bottom and making this one taller than just kind of including that because that makes it a little bit harder to get the truck over if you're trying to kind of play around with this but let's go ahead and turn this around and see what the back looks like we do have two stickers on this side i'll go ahead and lift it up we have a soldier sticker and a kind of no lucio sticker and on the inside right here, it is a little hard to see, but we do have another kind of soldier looking sticker there. And here we can see the back. It is kind of a little bare from the back and that's obvious that it's supposed to be displayed from the front, but we do have a few play features here. We can move these kind of little window shutters and the easiest way for me to do it is just kind of to push them in from the other side, but you can lift those up and that gives your characters a little bit more vantage into kind of watching over the payload and protecting it. But I do think that is a nice little addition just because it is simple, but I think it adds a lot of detail when they're down because you see those nice kind of graded window panes there. But overall, there isn't a whole lot of detail on here. What you see is kind of what you get. There's nothing special hidden around or anything. On the other side, they did show the kind of candle piece and everything being attached to right here which is how they showed it on the box, which is weird that they didn't show that in the instructions at all. But here we go. That's how it shows it on the box. It is a little bit kind of weird. I'm once again just not a fan of that fruit stand build. I definitely think it's really flimsy taking it kind of to moving it around and everything. It did break at least three or four times. Spilling out all of the kind of cherry and banana pieces all over the floor. And obviously that's really fun to kind of find a bunch of tiny little pieces that have fallen everywhere. Just because the building is not stable. We do get the nice kind of little care package or health thing there where you can heal up your characters if you wanted to. But I think this is a fairly nice looking build. I just really do not like that fruit stand. In the set we do get two instruction manuals. The smaller one contains the kind of fruit stand build with the electric wire, the payload, and all three minifigures. While the larger one is just for the kind of building front section. There isn't anything of note in any of these instruction manuals. We don't get any advertisements for their sets, extra information about the game. But on the front, we do get the kind of Lego Life app advertisement with the QR code there. But that is about it for these instruction manuals. I think they look nice. I'm glad that they included two so that if you do kind of want to divide and conquer building this, it is about half and half building with the kind of truck piece because the truck is definitely very detailed. And if you kind of wanted to split this up, I think it's very easy for that. But overall, I do like these instruction manuals. Overall, I am going to give this set an A. I think it is a great bang for the buck set. You get over 400 pieces for only $30. And I really do like most of the builds other than the fruit stand. I think the truck is just fantastic. The payload on there makes it look even better. And the kind of building front looks nice. I wish that they would have just gotten rid of the fruit stand and just kept the little telephone pole there. Because I do like the little light strings that adds just some more verticality and kind of 3D aspect to the set. I like all the characters. If you are a DPS character in Overwatch and you wanted to get a few of the minifigures, this is definitely the set for you. You get McCree, Reaper, and Soldier, which are probably the most infamous DPS characters from the game. I think the truck build is just fantastic. That dark kind of maroon red just looks great, as always. I wish that they would have made the shingles for the kind of little building front just kind of that darker red, but they did do the brighter red, which I assume is just to make it look a little bit brighter and more colorful. But I really think this is just a great set. It is definitely more of a display set than a play set because it is kind of harder to use this set properly because there isn't really any way to have the characters act out the scenes properly because you only really have a small section of the map. 
but I think for a display piece this is a great set. It can really only be displayed from one side because the back of the kind of building front just definitely does not look like it is supposed to, but overall I think this is a fairly nice set for the price. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe as well as comment any questions or anything you may have, and I'll see you later.